this tutorial, we will show you how to easily convert any part of a character to a vector object without using a flash editor. We will show you how to do this using Draw Plus X5. First, we will select a character and bring the character onto the stage. From the stage, we will then take the character into the Character Composer mode. What we will do is select the character's right hand. Now what we want to do is move that hand away from all the other objects. Don't forget to click on the Show Hide Connect Point to remove the green line. Next what we want to do is to zoom in on the object we've picked and make it fill the screen as best we can, making sure that we have plenty of white space around it and it's not touching any of the edges. So we'll size and move it until we can get it to fill the screen as large as possible but yet have some white space around it. Now the reason you want it as large as possible is so you, you will get the best resolution that you can when you copy it. If you have your grid lines turned on, press Control G to turn them off. If you want the background to be completely white and you don't want the object touching anything around it. Once you have your object uh, centered and enlarged as best as possible, then press the print screen button on your keyboard to take a copy of the image of your screen and put it onto the clipboard. Next you would switch over to Draw Plus X5, press Control V to paste the image and move your cursor to the upper left and click once to bring the image onto the drawing. Next you would click on the Cutout Studio button which will take the image into the Cutout Studio. Click on the Show Tinted button and then you can set your grow tolerance to something around 20 but you can adjust that as needed. Next use your brush and brush out everything that you don't want to retain. Make sure you pay attention to the edges to get all of those. Now we've masked out everything that we don't want. So then next check your output type to make sure it's alpha edge bitmapped. And then click OK to cut out the object and return it back to your drawing page. Enlarge it so it fills the page completely. We now have an image which is bitmapped with transparency. Next click on the Auto Trace button to bring the object into the Auto Trace and select the Logo Image Trace. Set your Edge Detection to Maximum and the Curve Optimization to Maximum. Then press the Trace button. Wait for it to finish the Trace. Then you can press the Accept button to return it back to your drawing. Next, right click on the selected object and do a Convert to Curves. Select the Node tool and you'll see all the nodes of the curves. Next, click on Clean Curves to get rid of all the extraneous nodes that we don't really need. This will reduce the number of nodes and give us a much cleaner look. We now have two objects on the screen. We've got the black outline and then we've got the skin color. Next click on the black part, right click on it, order objects, bring to front so that's on top of the skin object. Next click on the skin object and go around all the edges making sure that the nodes are overlapping the black area so that you don't have any white area showing. We'll just go around all the edges and eliminate the gaps, the white areas, to make sure that the top outline is covering the skin color all the way around.
At this point, we have now successfully copied the actor's hand and converted it into a vector object. Save the drawing at this point so that you can use it for future modifications. We will now modify the hand by adding a ring to a finger. We'll select the pen tool and draw a closed shape object in a rectangular shape across the finger where the ring will be. Next, zoom in and adjust the nodes so that the edges of the ring will be completely underneath the black outline. Next we'll select a fill color, something of a gold color, since it'll be a gold ring, like such. We'll do some final adjustments to make sure that the, the ring is the right size and position as we want. Since the ring object was the last object we drew or created, it's on top, so we want to click on the black outline and bring it to the front so that the ring is just behind it. We will then go select the ring again, select the line instead of the fill, and we'll change the line color to white. And then we'll set the line width to five point width and now we have a, a white edge on the ring. We'll zoom back out and there is our final result of the ring. Next select File and convert to Keyframe Animation. Then you want to click File, Export as SWF. Browse to where you want to save your file, put a name on it. We will call this one Hand Ring, and then we'll save. Now we will switch back to Crazy Talk Animator. Click on the Fit to Window to bring everything back into view. We will then take the hand, resize it, and reposition it to put it back in its original spot. Next, click on the Sprite Editor. Select the same sprite that we had copied, and then click on Replace, which will replace that right hand, and browse to your directory where you saved your modification, which is our ring hand. We'll bring that in. No, we don't want to replace all of them and we bring in our new object and as you can see the ring is on the finger. Now it's just a matter of resizing and positioning the hand in the correct location and making sure that the movement of the hand is correct and adjust as needed. And there is the finished product, a copy of the original hand with a ring on it, all done in vector format. You do not necessarily have to replace the existing hand object that you copied, but you can also put it into the custom mapping group and use it any time needed. That way you can still retain the original hand and switch to the one with the ring as needed. Next, go back to the stage and update the actor on the stage. Then take your actor and save them, and this actor will then have the hand with the ring on the finger. This technique can be used on any part of the actor to make any type of modifications or changes to the actor that you desire. 
It's an easy way to make changes to parts of an actor without a flash editor. To recap, converting a body part to a vector object. In Crazy Talk Animator, place your character onto the stage, then take the character into the composer mode. Select the part of the character you're going to copy or modify. Then enlarge that part as large as possible to fill the screen. Press the print screen button to copy that screen image to your clipboard. Then switch over to Draw Plus and paste the image onto your drawing using Control V and left clicking on your drawing. Use the Cutout Studio to cut the object out of the screen image and save as an Alpha Edge bitmap. Then use the Auto Trace with Logo Image Trace to convert the bitmap to vector objects. Each solid color will be converted to its own vector object. Put the object back on your drawing and use clean curves to simplify the curves. Select the object that will be the topmost object and bring that object to the front. Adjust the background object to overlap the foreground object to eliminate any gaps. Make your modifications and adjustments to the object as needed. Convert the drawing to a keyframe animation and export as an SWF file. Now switch back to Crazy Talk Animator and using the sprite editor, select the same sprite that you had copied and modified and replace it. Or add your modified sprite to the character in the custom group. Then update the stage with the character and then on the stage save your character for later use.